So I'm going to show you some of the um, groundwork. So he knows to just go out there. Somebody told him that pretty well. I don't let them smell poop because they can catch diseases. Other poop. So if he starts out slow, I let him go a little slow. Something spooked him. That's okay. Keep your energy low. Stay relaxed in the middle. You don't want to create more energy in here by walking around too much because he already has enough er nervous energy. So you'll see, I'm just turning. I'm not walking, I'm just turning. So I, I usually let him go around slow once and then I start making him move because uh, I want to wear him out some. And it's not like he's a, he doesn't buck or rear or do any bad things like that. It's his spooky energy. So we want to take some of the spookiness out of him so he needs to get that out before we get on him. So you time it for 10 minutes, I'm gonna make this horse move. So he's walked around, now I'm gonna make him go faster. So I just kiss. And you'll see I have a stick in my hand, but I'm not gonna crack it until later when he gets tired. So if he won't go, I just move it up and down. Well, I guess I am gonna move it because he got slow. <laughs> So we don't care if he's pacing, trotting, gating in here while he's loose. You can't really control him. My thing is with him, we're trying to get the energy out. So don't worry about his gait. And if somebody tells you, oh, you're going to mess up his gait, don't even worry about that. Just ignore them. It's more important to be safe. So let's wear his energy out. So I have him go two or three times around. And then I can usually just call his name. And he turns around. He's pretty easy. So again... Whoever taught him that did a pretty good job. He was a little nervous with it, but um, he's a smart horse. Okay, so that's twice around. We're going to go around one more time. And again, I'm going to time this for 10 minutes. I'm not going to keep you on the thing for 10 minutes. But... So I always make sure I look, because otherwise we always do it less than 10 minutes. You know, you think it's 10 minutes and it's like two. Okay, so this is society he doesn't see very well, so I'm going to bring my energy down. I'm going to take a deep breath in. And relax. Tenny. So now I'm going to switch my stick to the other hand. I'm going to point to the left and I wave my stick over on the right and I walk to my right to block him. Okay? So I want to block him in the direction I don't want him to go to. Okay. Off we go. So again, we want him to move, but we don't want to scare him. So I'm going to show you one more turn and then, uh, then I'll shut this off so I can save the battery and show you under saddle. Go a little faster. And he's a little heavy. It doesn't take much, you know, for him to gain weight. So we really do want him to run around here for 10 minutes. Because it helps with his weight control also. And anytime you have a, this is for everybody who's listening, a uh, spooky horse. See, now he doesn't respond so much to this, which is good and bad, right? He was too scared of it, but now he doesn't respond so well. But that's okay. It's all right. Keep going. The baby talk does help this horse. Um, so if you have a spooky horse, the round pen will not totally tire it out, but it does take off some of the edge and the spookiness, especially if you're going to ride your horse alone. Okay. So it helps with that. The young horses, even though they fake being calm, they can blow up and they can blow up pretty big. So those young horses, you get in here, chase them around. They won't move. You find things to make them move with, okay? And get that energy out. Now he just jumped forward. Not a big deal. It's okay. Sometimes he, you know, he doesn't see something and then he just reacts to it. It's fine. Okay. So now I'm going to bring my energy down. So I breathe. He already heard me talk. Tanny. So now I'm going to walk to my left to block that direction and point to the right. I'm trying to keep the stick in so you can see where it is. And then if he doesn't go, I just wave it at him. He's like, mm, I'm not so afraid anymore. So maybe he'll get stubborn instead of afraid. <laughs> but otherwise, he did very good. Keep going. Now sometimes he tries to turn in, especially to the right. He doesn't know. If he goes two or three times around and turns in, he's trying to do the right thing, so I don't punish him, I just let him turn. But if he goes halfway around like he just did and then turns in, like, can I stop? No, you keep him going that same direction. Okay, hopefully that'll help. I
slide. So I do want to show you one thing because before if I ever cracked this whip, he used to shoot like a rocket forward. And uh, so we got him used to the whip. I cracked it all around him. Now let's see what he does. That's nothing compared to what he used to do. So I'm going to crack it again. Good boy. And now he, he goes, oh, when I get scared, I'm supposed to turn and face my fear. So see what he did? Good job. So now we're going to block this direction. There we go. Then I'll crack it once this way. So again, he was jumpy. So that's why I got him used to the whip and I had him follow me while I cracked it around. Then I cracked it on the sides and gave him some treats. So I associated the whip with just standing there and food. And so uh, it worked for him. It might work for your horse. It might not. You have to figure out what should I associate with this with to make him not so scared of it. So there. And you're like, well, now it doesn't work. Well, now he's not scared. So that's the best part. I can still make him move. I'll just whip the whip at him instead. Now you go, Tenny. Now you go. Now he's, hopefully you can hear me, becoming almost, even though he's moving, he's almost becoming a little bit lazy. And that's what we'd rather have with him. We don't want him too energetic since he can get jumpy. Okay. So now all that stuff, if you look back at his videos, it worked with him. Okay. okay, so when I get on, I just sit here, I move around. Oh boy. I pet him. Now I'm going to pet his butt, but you won't see that. And I move all around, all around, I wiggle around in the saddle. You might see me going back and forth. Now I'm going to move my arm some. This is kind of like my check. Like, Tenny, are you okay today? Now I'm going to move my other arm. You okay on this side? Remember this bad side, so we want to make sure. Go boy. Good job. He's like, I don't care. So, now, again, horses don't like to be patted. They'd rather be scratched, but I know people are going to pat him. So, I want to pat him pretty hard, get the dust off, so he's used to that. Good boy. Okay, then I'm going to move my hand forward and back and swing around. And you just want him used to you moving around the saddle because he used to freak out with that stuff. Good boy. Now when I walk off, I'm going to immediately take him in a circle. So I'm riding in a round pen. So I increase my energy a little bit and now I'm immediately going to make a bunch of circles to the left. So. This is a 60 foot round pen. Every other panel, I'm going to make a circle. Now you might say, well, why are you doing that? I want to give him a job. I want to give him something to focus on. I just moved the reins and that's why he jumped a little bit. So we've got to give him something to do with his mind so his mind doesn't go off in other places and he scares himself. Okay. So now I'm every other panel, I'm at the other panel, I'm going to circle. So I'm looking where I'm going. That's the first thing you got to do. Then you steer. And with the sensitive horses, you only use your legs if you need your legs. So when I go to steer, that's when we get to this next panel, I'm going to look left. I'm going to open my left rein. My right rein is going to go against his neck just to guide him. He can't see on that side. So I want him to feel support so he knows where he's supposed to go. And then depending where his body's moving underneath me, if it falls in in the circle and he cuts the circle in, I'll push with my inside leg, which is my left leg. If he's not turning or he's making the circle too big, I'll push with my outside leg. Okay? So you can do this at home. Everybody should learn how to make circles. It'll save you, you know, if your horse won't stand still or something. Now, my, I have allergies, so I'm always wiping my nose and other things. And he didn't like that in the beginning either. Well, now you see he's used to it. Okay, so let's make another circle. So I look left, open my left rein. He starts turning right rein against his neck and a little right leg because he's drifting some. And it's just a light pressure. Okay. And now we're looking straight. You breathe. I'm not holding on at all with my legs. I'm just sitting like I'm sitting on the couch eating Cheetos. And I'm totally relaxed. I'm going to turn my head left. Now he knows he's supposed to turn, so I used a little rein, but not very much at all. And then I'm just guiding with my outside rein and leg, which is my right side. So inside is towards the inside of the arena, outside is towards the outer part of the arena. So right now my left side is my inside, and my right side is my outside. People get confused with left and right, and so that's why they do that. 
So he just scooted forward and we had rain in here before. She scooted forward in the same place. So maybe there's something in the bush. We don't know. Uh, and it's a little squeaky noise. Good boy. Oh, it's the fence making the noise. Okay. So I stopped and I backed them up. I don't want the horses that shoot forward. I want them to think the way to get away from those things is just ignore it and not shoot forward. So if they shoot forward, I stop them and I back them up. But you got to make sure they have a pretty good stop first and you have the right bit in their mouth. Okay. And I told you before, but the, I have a wonder bit and I'm using it in both these horses' mouths. Okay. So we did the circles. Now I'm going to serpentine. I'm going to come off the rail or away from the fence. I'm going to go back towards the fence. So it's going to be my left rein. I'm looking to the left. And now it's going to be my right rein. And I'm looking to the right. So you can either open the rein a little bit to do that. I don't know if you can see that. Or that's called an open rein when you open it to the side. Or you can do a direct rein, which means you pull it straight back towards your head. Either one is fine. Whichever works for your horse. If one doesn't work, you try the other one. Okay? Not in, no, we're not in any horse shows. So I serpentine back and forth so they know this really well. So then you can learn it. For, you know. um, and I'll help you if your horses are going fast or you're having problems or you're riding with pokey horses. Okay, now what's our next exercise? And you see we're just walking because we're trying to have this horse learn that it's okay to go slow and a motorcycle is going to hammer by and this guy is not afraid of all that crazy stuff and the trucks they all go flying by he don't care his people because again somebody beat him up or something happened and that's what he's afraid of so all those things i don't have to worry about which is great okay now i'm going to make a pattern so i'm going to turn left and this is a flower power you're going to go across the arena see that tent it's not even bothering him when i get to the fence i'm going to look left it's okay that he trips because he can't see so well. And I'm turning. I'm making like a pedal. Now I'm going to aim towards the sand. When I get over here, I'm going to turn left. So each, so each time I turn, I'm always turning the same direction. So we're going to look left, left rein, turn left. And then I'm cutting through the center. Now I'm going towards those bushes over there. Okay. This is your flower power exercise. So there's lots of things you can do in a round pen if you don't have an arena or you have a small area to ride. You just got to think about it. Now we're going to turn left. Now we're going to go towards the gate. So I keep trying to go to different spots. Otherwise you'll get stuck just making the same loop. But you're trying to make the petals of a flower. You can make any pattern you want. You just have to think about it. Like what could I make? So I'm going to go back through the middle and I'm going to pick another spot to do. This way your horse doesn't know where he's going. To the left. Okay. Now, uh, this guy does trip some because sometimes he can't see the humps on the ground. That's no big deal. He never falls down. He tries not to trip and scares him when he trips. Um, so I just tell him it's okay, Tenny. Who cares that you tripped? Alright. Now we're going to practice stopping. So I'm going to take a deep breath in and out. I'm going to say, whoa, whoa. So that means as soon as the word whoa comes out of my mouth, if he doesn't stop, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to back up about five steps and then I'm going to stand here. So I want him to think when that word whoa comes out of my mouth, he's supposed to stop and back up. And that's how you get a good whoa on your horse. But you have to do it over and over again and you have to do it at different speeds. Okay? Now we're just walking relaxed. You can see it's crazy windy here. A lot of horses would be nuts. Tenny's like, I'm not afraid of the wind. I'm afraid of people. Okay, so I'm gonna breathe. Whoa. Now he stopped. So that's good. Now I'm still gonna back up. But I didn't do it right away, right? I did it slower and I did it easier. Good job. I stand for a little bit. If they keep moving, I just back up more. Uh, some horses get really upset and will rear up. Those, I don't back up so much. <laughs> I find something else to do. You got to think outside the box with some of them. All right, so now we're going to walk off. So bring your energy up. Squeeze with both calves in. And off you go. I don't use my heels unless I have to. I never kick. If I have to kick, I wear spurs and a uh, stick. Okay, let's try another stop. So deep breath in and out. <sighs> Whoa. He stopped, but not so good. I'm going to back up again. Okay, so I'm going to do this a bunch of times as we go around the arena. 
and then I'll also do this some at our flat walk. You want a good whoa on your horse, the only way to get a good whoa is practice keep stopping. And you have to say whoa every time you do it, otherwise they don't understand it. And you know, you do it when they're slow in the beginning. and that might be part of the problem, so that's okay. All right, now we're gonna do a turn on the forehand. So we're turning to the outside, so a little outside rein and a little outside leg. So it's uh, your right rein just slightly and then it's the rest is leg. So we look to the right, always look before you go, just like driving your car. Little right rein, he's not moving, so I'm squeezing with my right leg. I'm so confused. I'm scared. Now, so I just gave him a little break. Now he tried to shoot forward, and what he did, I pulled on him so he couldn't go forward. There you go. Okay. So now we're repeating all the exercises this direction. So I start with my circles. There, something scared him, or he just jumps, or we have no idea. So it's very windy today. I'm not surprised. So what did I do? I just stop and back up. Now he just took a deep breath in. You're okay. Now I'm going to circle. I'm not going away from that scary thing. He's, oh, we're going back to it. Okay. Lots of things are moving. You always have to decide, you know, if this was when I first got Tenny, would I be doing this? No. He was jumping all over the place. So you got to be safe. You got to decide what days to ride, what days not to ride in the beginning. And then as they get better, then you can ride on windy, crazy days like this. But in the beginning? No, don't take those chances. Okay. All right, so again, I'm going to repeat everything this direction and then I'll turn you back on uh, when we start gating. So now that we're going this direction, his stops are better, but it's not as windy, so he can hear me better and he can concentrate. He's not so distracted. So here we go. He did it too quick. Whoa. So I didn't even get whoa out, and he stopped, and he actually took a step backwards. Uh, if your horse isn't getting it, you give him a little piece of food with the stop, that usually figures it out pretty quick. They go forward, I go backwards, and I just try to wait a little bit longer. You can't make them wait forever if they're the antsy ones. Okay. So we're going to do another turn on the forehand, so outside rein and leg, so left rein, left leg. So look to your left, a little left rein, and your leg. Okay, so Tenny doesn't have to do anything perfect. That's the in my book, because if you do, it'll just scare him more. So he gets to do stuff and he gets away with things a little bit more with me because he has some issues and so we don't want to scare him. We want to make him braver. So good job! You moved a little bit, but we don't care. Okay, so now we're going to flat walk and we're going to flat walk for the next five minutes. So I'm going to speed him up. Our little round pen goes uphill and downhill. So right now we're going downhill and he caught his foot. No big deal because I'm sitting back. And we don't have any footing yet, but we will. Um, so we want him to walk with a little energy, but not crazy fast because he was kind of stuck on fast. Okay. So at times he gets confused, especially with me talking and doing this. So going downhill, we're going to go a little slower because we don't want them to get pacey. On the flat, we'll speed them up a little. Sometimes he jumps a little forward. Now some of them, see how I click? And he jump forward? Uh, there's, he's not the only horse that has come to me like this. You cluck and they shoot off. That means somebody got after him or popped him into their gate. And so all I do is go around like this. faster so I just keep doing it over and over like everything else just to calm them down depends on the person some people want to go fast and you can leave that but otherwise I try to get them to think hey if I pluck a bunch yeah that means go but if I just once in a while then you don't really have to do anything except ignore me because he gets scared and he just wants to jump and bolt forward when he hears those things okay so this is the speed it won't look like anything fancy or anything really fast, but we gotta start somewhere. 
and make sure he stays calm and then he'll get faster over time. He naturally has some nice gates. Okay, so we flat walked, uh, did for about five weeks in this direction, and now we're doing his running walk, so I'm changing the way we're going. Just cutting across the arena. And uh, he's doing pretty well. He uh, leaned on the bit a lot when we started him again riding. And he used to just pull down. He was scared, but he would also pull down. So I'm going to speed him up a little bit. That's pretty good. We don't want this guy too fast. Since we don't know how his mom rides yet. So if he pulls down on the bit, we don't want to accept that because he gets trippy, right? Because he can't see so well. And uh, so if he leans down, I just slide the bit across his tongue. And I squeeze with my one hand, like I tighten my fist on the right hand, and I tighten my fist on the left. So let me see if he does it. So he's leaning a little bit now. So I squeeze right, release, squeeze left, release, squeeze right, release, squeeze left, release. When his head comes up and he's off of it, then I leave him alone. So you're trying to, sorry, Tenny. He's like, you're confusing me while you're talking. Um, you're trying to make it uncomfortable for him to pull down. So they make it uncomfortable for you, so you make it uncomfortable for them. So you slide that bit, you can take one rein and jab it up towards the sky. If that doesn't work, jab the opposite rein up and try different things to make it uncomfortable for them to lean on that bit. Um, a lot of times they do that because somebody's been in their mouth too much. You know, so be, with beginners, that's different. You're like, mm, you can't do much. You just got to be, become a better rider and the horse will get better. So, uh, you guys know I'm not a beginner, right? So, <laughs> I hope not. I wouldn't be teaching you guys. So, with him, I know I'm not in his mouth. I'm, try, I'm very soft with my hands. So, if he does it, I slide that bit across his tongue, which I just did. So let's see if he does it again and I'll show you how quick he's doing it right now. Right, left, right, left, right. There he's off it. Now I just left him alone. Right, left, right, left. So he does it a little bit more going down the hill. His gates are pretty good. They're not perfect, but again, I'm not trying to perfect anything with this guy right now because we're just building up his confidence. Okay, we're going to go around one more time and then we're going outside this arena and we're gonna go see how he does in the wind out there okay so we're opening the gate we'll see how he does I've been just flinging it but now I'm actually gonna try to open it good job he's a little scared you're okay see how nervous he's getting okay so he he ran through that he's like I don't like that so much it's all right well, let's go through it again. He's like, that gate's closing. Good boy. Good job. Because he's nervous. He, he doesn't want anything to hit him. He, he doesn't know what's going to happen. So if they get scared and I can go through something again without getting hurt, then I'm going to go through it again. Okay. So what I try to do with this guy is support him on the right side and help him, you know, to see through me because I can look at everything. And uh, stay relaxed, keep breathing. But I know he might jump. And we just try to help him as much as we can. So like there's a black dog that jumps out up here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to cut the turn and help him. He'll be okay once he sees it's a dog, but it's black, and, you know, we're trying to build confidence, so he might not see it that well. So, see, I just clucked. It's all right. It's okay. And he shot forward. And again, it's a mistake, but somebody taught him that, so I don't want him to do it, so it's a mistake to me, but it's not a mistake to him. He's like, I'm supposed to run. I'm supposed to run. I know. Okay, so when I walked around this yesterday, every time I helmet hit the branches he freaked out and shot forward so you're like so what do you do about that you do it over and over again and you know people oh i'm getting scared he's gonna freak out when my helmet hits it oh, well 
here we go. Good job! Now it hit it, but he didn't freak out that much today. Good boy. And then I reward when they're good, right? He's like, oh, I get cookies when I, her helmet hits that. So again, try to associate what they're scared of. Weed whacker or something. But try to associate what they're scared with of with something good. Okay? And associate their bad behaviors with something bad. To try to help them. So he's doing quite well. He's going a little fast. And uh, here comes another tree. We got the weed whacker behind us, the cars, and then my helmet's going to hit this tree. Now he shot forward a lot that time, didn't he? Good boy. So now I'm right in the trees. Good boy. I guess what I'm going to do. There better not be any bugs in here because I'm sitting here rubbing the thing on my helmet. Everybody has to go under bushes and other things, right? So you got a horse that freaks out with this, you got to get them over it because you're going to have trees hit your helmet. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just rubbing it on my helmet while he eats the cookie. And he don't like this, but that's too bad, isn't it? Okay, Tenny. So now, let's have my helmet hit it again. So when he's scared, I can feel him shaking, but he's tolerating it. Good boy! And there's Mr. Weed Whacker. Okay. So again, I'm not going to do it a long time. I don't want to scare the heck out of him. He tolerated it for a little bit, and then, you know, that was enough for today. But you can see, even though that weed whacker is a little scary, now it's on his right side, so he could jump. Oh boy. So, when you get nervous, you start breathing and talking. Because if you don't, you'll get scared, you'll tense up. It makes the horse more scared. So breathe. Who cares about these trees? I love when trees whack me in the head. Here it comes. Good job. So he thought about it, didn't he? Good boy. But then he stopped, but I did have to pull. So you don't do these things with your reins real long. You know, or riding with crazy people. You have to rehab your horses usually alone or with other people who just walk and you know be kind and help you out so we got cars coming up behind us but you see Tenny doesn't care about that stuff right he's actually a good horse something just happened ruined his confidence with people okay so he just did it twice and that you know that's enough uh, people think, you know, the horse does this good, move on. Oh, they did that, move on. And they want to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and adding more things. And then, you know, they blow the horse's mind and they get freaked out. So, no, you just do a little bit of time. A little bit like, oh, that's good, he did that today. Well, that might be your ride for today because he, he was good. It was something he was scared of before, so reward them. I never know how long my battery's going to last. So now we're going to walk down in the uh, lower pasture. We're going to walk by all his friends. He nickers to his girlfriend. But he usually will leave her. He's like, okay, I'll go with you, Gig. So we got that thing blowing around. We got decorations hanging on it. All these horses are getting used to blowing tents. Right now I got a hose I'm going over. I, I want him to learn it's okay to step on things because he gets so scared like that. What was that? What was that? Okay. He's not trying to hurt anybody. He's not trying to kill me or anything. He's just scared. Okay. And it's very windy and he's doing great. So I just stop him. He can only get better. He's gotten so much better than he was. 
thing and not going to your girlfriend. He's like, can I talk to her? No. So, Raina doesn't like the metal squeaking. Lots of horses don't. Right? But once they hear it a thousand times, they shouldn't mind as much. What else? I can't take him out on the trail till he's good with all this stuff in an open space because there uh, we have single tracks. There's not as much room to move, so I got to make sure he's safe and confident in here before I even try that. So no point. I expect that he'll actually be good. And then it's just teaching the owner and how to steer him and how to help him. Once you know what's wrong with your horse, you know every horse does something bad. Okay. But once you know what's wrong with your horse, you figure out how, well, how, what can I do to help them? You know, how can I fix this? It may never go all the way away. A lot of times it doesn't, but you can make it much better. And then, you know, the rider has to learn how to deal with it. So I like when the riders come and the horses make mistakes while they're here, because then we can deal with it or work on it. Okay. We don't always know why they do goofy stuff. Sometimes they just do goofy things. And I can tell them, I don't know why he did that, but let's work on it. You see if they do it again. No, it was probably just a quirk or a mistake. This is very shot forward just a tiny bit, not bad. It's okay. Um, this is scary for a lot of horses to spook in this area. You know, there's weird things, there's logs birds in the tree, you know, all those killer birds. We've been trying to maul our horses. Probably in the tree like this. Hey, Joe, another horse is coming. Watch this. It comes out and goes, walk, walk. Freaks your horse out. Okay, but I, I think he's doing quite well, don't you? Hon? He's come a long way. We got solar panels over there. Now I moved and I'm freaked out. So you know what I'm doing? I'm just standing here and doing the same thing I just did. It's okay. People get caught up. What did somebody do? I don't know. You know, somebody might have moved and smashed them. Or maybe they didn't move and smash them. They just blew his mind because they did too much. And then he got freaked out. We just never know. So well, people don't get upset, get better. Don't get sad, but you become a better rider and you help your horse. So now he just pulled down a little bit, so I squeeze my left hand, then my right hand. I notice some of you are like, this is boring. She's just walking around the field, but it helps the owners to see what their horse is doing. Might help some of you, if not. I always talk through these things, and uh, so sometimes I say things I think are important, and you miss it, because I, I don't put it all on the description, because I'm exhausted at night. Oh, there you tripped a little bit big, so we're going to back up. But I always try to give you helpful information. It's not always on the description, so you got to watch the videos if you want to find out what it is, or scan past it if you think I'm boring. So our goal, we're going to walk up here. This is the farthest he's gone so far because we did the front and the back. I haven't done them together. I've done them separately. It's okay. And uh, the footing right here, it's up and down and all over, but he's got to learn how to handle the footing. It's okay if he trips. Right? Other people be like, he can't see. I'll just keep him on the flat footing. Oh, he's getting much better, so why? He wants to have some fun too. Okay. So there's grass over here, and this is going to be his reward. That We made it all the way over here. He did great. And I'm going to stop. Oh. And we're going to undo our vest. And then I got trees over here. So while I have him grazing, I'm going to rub the trees against my hat. Sorry, Kenny. So he gets to listen to it while he has something good happening, right? I figured I might as well show you this because you might not know what I'm talking about rubbing that tree on my hat. So I'm going to go stand under that tree 
and I'm going to run it and rub it over my hat because when I'm on him, he can't tell what's making that noise. So see him eating grass? Here we go. Before I had the camera on, he was staring at me like, what are you doing? So he can look at me with either eye. See branches? She's going, leaves flying off. Tenny sensible, so once he sees what it is and he goes, oh, Gay's nuts, but she's not going to hurt me. He's okay with it. Right? He's the one I was jumping around doing all that crazy stuff with. So now he don't care. So we'll see next time I ride him if that helps. But now I have leaves all over my helmet. And Tenny has more confidence. <laughs> right? More leaves. The neighbor's probably like, look at that crazy lady rubbing the tree on her head. I think she's nuts. But I'm going to do this pretty damn hard because I'm going to go under some trees. And if I get my head stuck, you know, I don't want the horse to bolt forward. I go flying off. Right? And he's like, I wouldn't do that. No, but someone else would. So now I'm hitting myself in the head. Right? Move the trees all around. I'm done being the idiot for the day, Tenny. He's like, you are a big idiot. Stop. Okay, now let's see. It will jump and see what he does. Good, but see, he's, he used to take off. Good job. I can't make him not a horse. I can make him not as scared. Good boy. Come here. So see, if he gets scared, you still go up to him. Sometimes the horses are scared and the people creep around them. I'm like, no, you just got to just go up. Just go up to them and touch them and then they go, oh, okay. Okay, but you creep around them or try to be more careful. They get more scared, right? So let's jump again. See, nothing now. Now he knows he gets a cookie for just standing there. I can't wait to hear the story. It's a freaky trainer over there. Okay, that's it for real. Bye. He said thanks for watching.